When I say philosophy, what images show up in your minds? Aristotle, Socrates, Plato, or perhaps more modern philosophers like Nietzsche. While Western philosophy is more popular, Indian philosophy is like an esoteric subject nowadays. So how does one learn about them or popularize the tenets of Indian philosophy? A cinematic medium is one of the media to convey thoughts or concepts. So where are the cinematic films about philosophy? More importantly, are there any films on or about Indian philosophy? In my search, I came to know about G.V. Iyer. Ganapati Venkataraman Iyer, or G.V. Iyer, as he was popularly known, was a profiling actor and director. In his career spanning nearly 50 years, he has made many movies. Sometime in early 1980s, he embarked on a mission which started with the movie Adi Shankaracharya. There is no way he would have known that this decision would change the course of his life ahead. In the next 15 years, he made four more movies, all of them about Vedanta. In doing so, he has created a rare document of not only philosophy, but also nearly a thousand years of history of the Indian subcontinent. Let's take a look at how this Vedantic filmmaker undertook one of the most underrated, yet intellectually satisfying cinematic ordeal. So how do we show Vedanta on screen? G.V. Iyer believed in the adage, a person's life is their philosophy. He begins at the beginning and starts by making a biography of Adi Shankaracharya, the founder of Advaita Vedanta. The saint philosopher who walked the country from Kashmir to Kanyakumari preaching Advaita. Iyer knew Sanskrit. He had studied a great deal about Shankara, so he decided to make the film in Sanskrit. Thus, making Shankaracharya the first Sanskrit movie. The filming was filled with difficulties. First, he had to convince the seers of Shankara Mutt about the need to portray him in a way people could identify with. Next, even though the filming was completed in 50 days of actual shooting, it was an 8 month long journey. Ayer took a 40-member crew in a bus from Kanyakumari to Kashmir in search of authentic locations. The budget offered by National Film De Development Corporation was insufficient. Ayer somehow managed for additional funds. During shooting, Ayer slipped down a mountain slope and injured himself. The entire crew thought that that was the end of shooting. Ayer shocked them by reaching the location holding crutches and continued shooting. His aim was to capture sunset as he had visualized. The visual beauty, the stunning locales and the simple tale went down well with the audience, even though they did not know much about Sanskrit. The movie Adi Shankaracharya was far ahead of its time. The first Sanskrit movie backed four national awards, including Best Film, Best Screenplay, Best Cinematography and best audiography. This was the beginning, but the movie set the ball rolling for the Vedantic cinematic universe. G.V. Iyer. Next project was about th the 13th century philosopher Madhavacharya. Madhavacharya was a proponent of Dvaita school of Vedanta. Madhavacharya emphasized the path of bhakti that is complete devotion to the God. God is everything. The film faced opposition from the Madhava community for the way it portrayed Madhavacharya. But the film is a picturesque representation of bhakti, from casting to costume, setting, lighting and composition. Ayer is fully in touch both with the Indian tradition and the cinematic technique. The film backed the national award for Balamurthy Krishna as the best music director. G.V. Ayer's next project was about Ramanuja the early 11th century Vedantic philosopher who popularized Vishisht Advaita. Ramanuja was born in Perambudur, 
Chola Tamil Nadu. As such, G.V. Iyer chose to make the movie in Tamil. This time again, controversy followed him, but he stood his ground. The movie does full justice to the life of Saint, the saint philosopher. It is complete with symbols and metaphors, especially the metaphor of lotus. Look at the closing shot of the movie when the disciples flock around Ramanuja making a human flower. Now that he made the movie on the pillars of Vedanta, what would he embark on next? G.V. Iyer decided to make a movie about Bhagavad Gita. Remember that Bhagavad Gita is one of the primary sources of Vedanta. So this was a continuation of his Vedanta project. What sets this movie apart from other movies on Gita or Mahabharata is that it explores the reaction of the recipient, Arjuna, as he listens to Gita from Lord Krishna. It is told from his perspective. The film is replete with images and symbols emphasized in the Gita. It is about the journey of a man, both within and without. I cannot begin to talk about how mystical and innovative I find this movie perhaps in another video. The film again won a national award in 1993. Now he has made movies on the pillars of Vedanta and one of the important documents collectively known as Prasthanatrayi. What would he do next? G.V. Iyer, now nearly 80, embarks on his next project about another Vedantic philosopher, Swami Vivekananda the founder of what is known as Neo Vedanta. This turned out to be his swan song, his Hamsa Gite. This film was made in Hindi or Hindustani. It was the closest to a typical Bollywood film. The Neo Vedantic philosopher Vivekanand was responsible for spreading the ideas of Vedanta in the West. It is interesting that Sarbadaman Banerjee plays Vivekanand here. He had previously played Shankaracharya. Controversy followed a year here as well, and he had to make many changes to the film because of the objections from Ramakrishna Mission. Mithun Chakravarti, who played Ramakrishna Paramhansa, got a national award for this film. If we look at his Vedantic films as one long continuous project, then we find that there is a consistency in the tone and messaging. He translated intricate philosophical ideas into the cinematic visual medium. It helps that all of these movies were shot by Madhu Ambat, music was was by Balamurli Krishna and the screenplay were written by J.V. Iyer. This cin Vedantic cinematic universe is not only a study in filmmaking but also a historical document of the last millennia. It goes without saying that the research here is outstanding. J.V. Iyer brought to the medium of cinema Advaita, Dvaita, Vishishta Advaita propagated by Shankaracharya, Madhavacharya and Ramanajacharya, but without compromising on their essence. The screenplay takes you to the historical setting of ancient Mat and medieval India. I strongly believed that these great Vedantic philosophers were relevant even today, that the films were aimed at presenting their lives and ideas, not to find fault or even compare the truths as spoken by these great souls of India. It is unfortunate that G.V. Iyer is not well known. One can only hope that his legacy sees a resurgence and we see more discussions around his life and work. <laughs>